Paper Oceanography Topic Giant Submarine Canyons Objectives After attending this lesson, the user would be able to understand the basic characteristics of the submarine canyons, their origin, and their distribution in various major oceans of the world. Detailed information about the morphological conditions, sedimentology, and marine life of the submarine canyons will also be understood. Introduction The surface beneath the oceanic waters is characterized by a lot of relief features. On the basis of bathymetric surveys and detailed oceanographic explorations, the morphology of ocean floors was studied by several workers. The morphology of the ocean floor is highly uneven and unique. The structure and distribution of relief features of the ocean floors vary from place to place. Seas and oceans border the continents with two distinct regions. One is the continental margin and the other one is the deep ocean basin. The continental margin includes the gently sloping continental shelf and the rapid sloping continental slope. The sediments transported by the major rivers of continents are deposited inside the seas by forming underwater channels and canyons. They are called as the submarine canyons. Submarine canyons are identified based on their properties and their proximities to the coastal environments, including the deep sea deposits. This lesson highlights about all these typical underwater features. Submarine canyons. The term canyon refers to a long, narrow and deep valley of a major river. As the name implies, submarine canyons are deep valleys extending inside the oceans. They intrude through both continental shelf and continental slope and deposit their sediment loads ultimately in the continental rises. The mouths of the canyons are normally open onto features called as depositional fans. There are hundreds of submarine canyons distributed in all the oceans and major seas of the globe. Work of Shepard The characteristics of submarine canyons were presented by Shepard in 1963. After a thorough analysis of global submarine canyons, he distinguished the submarine canyons from the channels that are formed through their seaward extension. Canyons that are cut into shelf and slope bedrock and sediment typically have a V-shaped profile and have a steeper gradient than the channels formed in the depositional areas associated with the canyons. The canyons lack levy morphology. Shepard in 1973 distinguished the delta front troughs which are closely related to submarine canyons. Parts of a submarine canyon. Every submarine canyon has a canyon head, sloping canyon walls, canyon width and length, observable flow channels, canyon floor, and a plain containing sediments. The mouth of a canyon normally opens onto a depositional fan. Every fan has an apex and a crest. The canyon head occurs at the shelf break regions in approximately about 170 meters water depth. All submarine canyons possess their own rims and tributary valleys. They also differ in their dimensions. In comparison to modern canyons, dimensions of ancient canyons are considerably smaller. Physical Dimensions Submarine canyons vary considerably in their dimensions. Their length, valley walls and cross-sectional profiles are highly heterogeneous. The Bering Canyon is more than 1,100 kilometers long and is the world's longest submarine canyon. The shortest canyons are those off the Hawaiian Islands. The average length here is about 10 kilometers. The average length of all the canyons has been estimated to be around 55 kilometers. The deepest canyon cuts nearly 5 kilometers into the continental slope regions as seen in the Grand Bahama Canyon. Profile of the canyons. Submarine canyons are characterized by relatively steep gradients. The average slope of canyon walls is 58 meters per kilometer. 
in general shorter canyons tend to have higher gradients for example shorter canyons of the hawaiian group have an average gradient of 144 meters per kilometer whereas the bering canyon has a slope of only 7.9 meters per kilometer the longitudinal and transverse sections vary from canyon to canyon as well modern canyons are relatively narrow deeply incised steeply walled often sinuous valleys with predominantly v-shaped cross sections extension of river channels many submarine canyons are found to be the extensions of large rivers inside the sea some submarine canyons do not have any such association with the rivers but they are associated with some faults canyons cutting across the continental slopes are found at depths greater than 2 kilometers below the sea level many submarine canyons continue to be the underwater channels across the continental rise and may extend for several hundred kilometers inside the slope geomorphic setting submarine canyons are sites of considerable geological complexity and biological diversity they are developed due to various tectonic phases including subsidence and rapid sea floor spreading the geomorphology and extent of the canyons are normally studied and mapped with high resolution bathymetric data most of them are structurally controlled with their orientation mainly influenced by original rift structures formation of submarine canyons several theories have been proposed for the origin of submarine canyons the first theory is related to the downcutting action of major rivers beyond shelf and slope regions of the oceans submarine canyons are valleys eroded by rivers when full glacial accumulation on land happened with lowering of sea levels this theory failed to say why they are in further down the slopes deep inside the oceans geologists believed that the submarine canyons are formed due to turbidity currents the role played by turbidity currents in creating the deep valleys has been explained with evidences turbidity currents are created when loose wet sediment tumbles down the slope like a submarine landslide sliding might have been triggered due to earthquakes or due to gravity on slopes when there is an overload of sediments role of turbidity currents the major mechanism of canyon erosion is now thought to be of turbidity currents and the underwater landslides a turbidity current is a current of rapidly moving sediment laden water moving down a slope a turbidity current can reach a speed of more than 100 kilometers per hour and a distance of about 700 kilometers a turbidity current has tremendous erosive power due to the mixture of water and sediments it can create cracks deepen them and form canyons it will slow down when it reaches the sea floor all the sediments brought by the submarine canyons are deposited on the deep ocean floors global distribution the first global review on canyon distribution origin geology and sedimentation patterns dates from 1966 made by shepard and dill who mapped 96 major canyons around the world high resolution bathymetric data indicate that there are well over 660 submarine canyons distributed globally the very recent tabulation based on satellite altimetry suggests that the number of submarine canyons could exceed 5800 the patterns of benthic community structure and productivity have been studied only in a small number of submarine canyons it is less than 45 it is less than 0.7% integrated analysis whenever any attempt is made to investigate the submarine canyons an integrated approach is adopted to explore the underwater features and processes this requires a thorough analysis of various oceanographic aspects the regional geology of the oceans is to be studied first then the ocean geomorphology is to be explored through bathymetric surveys monitoring of bathymetric hydrological climatological and biological parameters are done during deep water explorations 
The underwater sediments and life are to be analyzed after understanding the ocean dynamics, including the nature of water circulation. Oceanographic surveys. Oceanographic surveys are conducted with very clear objectives. It requires sophisticated equipment and experienced scientific personnel, including the crew of the vessels. For understanding the nature of geomorphology and sedimentology, various geophysical methods are to be adopted. Real-time data acquisition and processing are done in many cases. Side scan sonar soundings, multi-beam sonar soundings SWAT, and shallow seismic reflection surveys are conducted over the continental shelf, slope, and rise regions. The data of wind-induced waves, tides, and ocean currents are also analyzed simultaneously. Basin geology. The basin geology is to be studied with all the data and samples collected from the oceans as water, sediment, and biota. It is necessary to collect samples of planktons, nectons, and benthos. Bathymetric charts, seismic profiles, sediment traverses, and biotic zonation mapping are done in order to understand the physical, biological, chemical, and geological oceanography of submarine canyons. Sedimentology. For understanding the sedimentology of underwater features, collection and analysis of sediment samples are done with sediment sampling tools. Water samples are also collected at regular intervals of space and depth to determine the temperature, density, salinity, and other properties. Still camera photography is made to record all features. Erosional features. Submarine canyons serve as major conduits for transporting sediment from land, then from land to the shelf, and from the shelf to the slopes. Underwater canyons are the prominent erosional features found both in the U.S. Pacific and Atlantic continental margins. There also exists a distinction between the submarine canyons and the submarine erosional channels. The channels have no connection with the shelf or land-based rivers as conduits for sediment transport. Canyons and channels are associated with gullies, troughs, fault valleys, and sea valleys. River sediment, nutrients, and organic matter are directly moved down through the submarine canyons. They are also subjected to more regular and vigorous sedimentary processes involving not only terrigenous sediment, but also nutrients and organic matter. Submarine canyons are the most important conduits for funneling sediment from continents to oceans. They are the zones of sediment bypassing. Very little sediment accumulates within the canyon until it ceases to be an active conduit. Classification. There are two main types of submarine canyons observed over the globe. The first type of canyons extend from the continental shelf to the slope. Often, these canyons are located in close proximity to the present-day river systems. River sediment, nutrients, and organic matter are directly deposited into this type of submarine canyons. Blind canyons. The second and most common type of submarine canyon is the one which is separated from the continental shelf. The canyon head is located on the upper continental slope regions in water depths of a few hundred to few thousand meters. These canyons are known as blind canyons. They do not necessarily occur adjacent to any major rivers. They are less likely to intercept the continental shelf zones and do not possess any river-derived sediments or nutrients or organic matter. Types of canyons. On the basis of morphogenetic processes, submarine canyons are classified into two different types as glacially eroded canyons and non-glacial canyons. The non-glacial submarine canyons are more in number than the glacial types in the oceans. These are also widely spread over in all the oceans. Most of them are located in front of the mouths of the major rivers. The longitudinal course of submarine canyons is usually sinuous. The gradient of submarine canyons are steeper than the continental canyons. Most of them are several kilometers wide at their heads and their average length may be about 10 to 16 kilometers. 
role of mass movements the term mass wasting is used to denote the slow movement of earth's surface masses under the action of gravity it happens to all the underwater masses it would also include the effects of bio erosion and sand migration why to study these features the major significance of studying the submarine canyons is to understand the deep sea habitats submarine canyons are known for their support to a diverse range of biological communities surviving within its nutrient rich water masses the steep sides of exposed lithified strata provide the hard surface for the sessile organisms to survive and the flat sediment laden floors support the burrowing organisms to survive in addition the submarine canyons are potential zones for a lot of physical and biological processes inside the oceanic water masses complex processes canyons can be complex topographic features often characterized by complicated patterns of hydrography flow and sediment transport and accumulation the unusual physical oceanographic conditions Inside canyons can be caused by topographic effects such as accelerated currents and dense water cascades which increase suspended particulate concentrations and transport organic matter from coastal zones to deeper regions of the margin these phenomena can be responsible for enhancing both pelagic and benthic productivity inside canyon habitats as well as the biodiversity of many benthic faunal groups unpredictable zones because of the physical complexity of canyon habitats predictions concerning the effects of canyons on local and regional diversity are not straightforward since a variety of environmental and physical characteristics like topography current regime sediment availability and quantity and quality of organic matter supply are involved it would be very difficult to predict the nature of canyon habitats drivers of biological productivity the four most important driver that is affecting the biodiversity and biomass abundance patterns in canyons is the organic matter input with references to the sources quantity and quality this is also related to the coastal detrital inputs like kelp and other macrophytic debris finally it is related to the pelagic productivity regimes like upwelling mesoscale eddies and zooplankton aggregations seafloor terrain and substrate heterogeneity altogether account for the second most important driver of benthic biodiversity in submarine canyons super parameters the physical canyon structure such as bottom types and sedimentary structure presence of hard substrates grain size distributions shape and relief of the canyon are the geological factors of canyons one of these factors sediment grain size can be considered as a super parameter since it directly or indirectly reflects local physical energy and sedimentation patterns hot spots for biological production continental margins are considered major reservoirs of marine biodiversity when compared to the most diverse terrestrial and shallow water marine habitats submarine canyons are an important source of nutrients and sediments for the deep ocean marine life submarine canyons are also major hot spots of biological production and fish catch scientists found abundant life in many of these channels from their rims down to the bottoms of their steep cliffs the biological abundance may be due to the inflow of nutrients from the rivers that feed these canyons canyon effects the majority of findings suggest that enhanced habitat heterogeneity and organic matter deposition in canyons are responsible for enhancing benthic biodiversity and creating biomass hotspots enhanced local fishery production in canyons when contrasted to regular slope environments has also been reported and attributed to a canyon effect 
the channeling and concentrating of detrital organic matter and pelagic animal populations in canyons are very interesting subjects of study. Many other unusual ecological characteristics have been attributed to canyons such as concentrating on vertical migrators, displacing deep water species to coastal zones, promoting topographically induced upwelling and enhancing diapignal mixing via internal wave generation. Valley shape and substrate A V-shaped canyon is usually associated with high energy currents, sediment slumps that can expose hard substrates and enhancing habitat heterogeneity and favoring mobile and sessile megafauna suspension feeders. On the other hand, it can promote sediment scouring by disturbing the macrofauna. The U-shaped canyons affect the sediment deposition and can potentially be a proxy of organic enrichment. For example, fine organics can deposit in U-shaped, wider and with gentle sloping walls and flat thalweg enhancing food availability. Homogeneous conditions prevent three-dimensional habitat structuring but allows organic matter retention. The mosaic type habitats, soft mixed with hard substrates, favors niche partitioning and increased. Habitats The enormous reservoir of biodiversity on continental margins promote many margin habitat types. The typical types are cold seeps, coral mounds, foraminifera beds, oxygen minimum zones and open slopes. A recent study estimates that the total marine eukaryotic biodiversity is around 2.2 million species. A decadal effort made by the International Project Census of Marine Life, CMOL, collected 6,000 potential new species and completed new descriptions of 1,200 species. Environmental factors Sediment type, substrate inclination, water mass properties like temperature and dissolved oxygen, and organic matter input all control the biomass in canyons, while organic detrital input and habitat heterogeneity can lead to differences in benthic communities between canyons and slopes. A variety of other environmental factors can also influence these patterns. They are the frequency and intensity of disturbance such as flushing events, sediment slumps at the base of canyon walls, water mass properties such as temperature variability and oxygen concentrations, and the vertical flux of particulate organic carbon, POC. All these factors can differ between canyons and open slopes. A number of environmental variables, including temperature, dissolved oxygen, organic detritus occurrence, and the estimated POC flux, all vary with depth. Research data requirements. While analyzing the biodiversity of submarine canyons, the following data are needed. Water mass variability characteristics including temperature, dissolved oxygen and salinity, organic matter input including particulate organic carbon, POC, flux at the sea floor, percent occurrence of terrestrial plant and macroalgae detritus on the sea floor, plant detritus like leaves, trunks and seeds, Sediments of canyons. High sediment loading is observed in shelf incising canyons, providing large and steady supplies of sediments that reach the canyon heads and are transported down the canyon. High sedimentation is often associated with high organic content. Submarine fans and related turbidite systems comprise deposits of mass movements, including slides, slumps, turbidity currents, and debris flows. Canyons can be sites of enhanced organic matter flux and sediment deposition. Deep sea fans. Submarine fans are accumulations of sediment deposited at the terminal end 
of land to deep sea sediment routing systems. At a given moment in time, sediment routing systems comprise sediment source areas dominated by denudation, a zone of sediment transfer, and a terminal region of deposition such as a submarine fan. These are shallow marine sediments. They are fan or cone shaped systems. They are located off the seaward opening of large rivers and submarine canyons. Canyons in world's major oceans. Submarine canyons exist in almost all the three major oceans. The largest submarine canyons are located in the Pacific Ocean and Atlantic Oceans. The undersea canyons and seamounts of the major oceans are home to an extraordinary universe of life from rare cold water corals, anemones and sponges to an array of fish and marine mammal species including the endangered sperm whale. The continental slope of New England and the mid-Atlantic holds approximately 70 canyons of varying shapes and sizes. Many submarine canyons have yet to be fully explored. Canyons of the Pacific Ocean The following are the submarine canyons of the Pacific Ocean. Bering Canyon, Monterey Canyon, Navarin Canyon, Pribilof Canyon, Scripps Canyon, Zemchug Canyon. The Bering Canyon Three of the largest submarine canyons in the world are incised into the Beringian, North American margin of the Bering Sea. The Bering Canyon, which is farther south in the Bering Sea, is first in length and total area. In contrast, the largest submarine fans, example Bengal, Indus and Amazon, have substantially smaller delta front submarine canyons that feed them. The Bering Canyon is the longest of the Bering Sea canyons. It extends to about 400 kilometers across the Bering Shelf and Slope. It is confined at its eastern edge by the Aleutian Islands. The width of the canyon at the shelf break is about 65 kilometers. It is about two-thirds in dimension than that of the Zemchuk Canyon and Navarin Canyons. Due to its great length, the Bering Canyon has the largest area. At a depth of 3,200 meters, the Bering Canyon reaches the Aleutian Basin. Monterey Canyon The Monterey Canyon is the largest and deepest submarine canyon off the Pacific coast of North America. The canyon has three tributaries at its upper reaches in Monterey Bay near California. They are Minor Soquel Canyon to the north, Main Monterey Canyon with its head aligned east-west off Moss Landing, Carmel Canyon to the south. Carmel Canyon is the main tributary. It joins with the main canyon at an axial depth of 1,800 meters. The sinuous courses of Monterey Canyon goes up to 2,900 meters. The Navarin Canyon. The Navarin Canyon is a submarine canyon in the Bering Sea. It is just as wide but less than half as deep as the Zemchug Canyon, which is the largest canyon in the world. The Navarin Canyon is the third largest to cut through the Beringian margin. It is the second largest in area. Though these canyons were not directly formed by rivers, it is postulated that when the sea level was low during the Ice Ages, rivers such as the Yukon and the Quim may have shaped in part the heads of these canyons. At the shelf break, it is approximately 100 kilometers or 62 miles wide. Pribilof Canyon Pribilof is a long submarine canyon rising from the Bering Abyssal Plain on the floor of the Bering Sea. It is located southeast of the Pribilof Islands near Alaska. It runs across the edge of continental slope and is 426 kilometers long with walls 1,800 meters high. It is believed to have been formed when large masses of sediments supplied by Alaskan and Siberian rivers slumped down the slope of the shelf region. Scripps Canyon Scripps Canyon is a shallow marine canyon in the Pacific of La Jolla in California. The valleys are 12 meters deep. The maximum depth goes up to 300 meters. Due to its shallowness and proximity to the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, it has been thoroughly studied. Zemchuk Canyon Zemchuk Canyon is a giant underwater canyon located in the middle of the Bering Sea. This submarine canyon 
is the largest canyon in the ocean. The canyon has a vertical relief of 2,600 meters, dropping from the shallow shelf of the Bering Sea to the depths of the Aleutian Basin. Zemchuk Canyon is deeper than the Grand Canyon. Zemchuk Canyon has two main branches, each larger than typical continental margin canyons, such as the Monterey Canyon. Zemchuk Canyon is the largest submarine canyon in the world, based on drainage area, 11,350 kilometers squared, and volume, 5,800 kilometers cubed. Zemchuk Canyon is an important habitat for many species of ocean wildlife. What makes this Zemchuk Canyon the largest canyon in the world is not only its great depth, but its large cross-sectional area. Canyons of the Atlantic Ocean The Atlantic Ocean has the following major submarine canyons. Amazon Canyon, Hudson Canyon, Veracruz Canyon, Congo Canyon, Great Bahama Canyon. More than 200 species of invertebrates have been identified in the Atlantic submarine canyons and sea mounts including dozens of species of stony corals, black corals, soft corals, sea pens, anemones, and sponges. The Amazon Canyon The Amazon Canyon is a submarine canyon within the Amazon fan in the Atlantic Ocean. It is located approximately 322 kilometers from the mouth of the Amazon River near South America. It covers an area of 2,250 square kilometers. It was formed in the mid to late Miocene period. The canyon is believed to have formed through mass failures and subsequently evolved through underwater erosion. Because of its relatively small size, the canyon has been extensively mapped. The Hudson Canyon The Hudson Canyon is another large submarine canyon incised into the Atlantic continental slope and outer shelf of New York Harbor, USA. It is extended from the Hudson River. The canyon is about 80 kilometers long, with its fan goes to a depth of 3,000 meters. It's a conduit for moving sediments, nutrients, and pollution from the land to the deep ocean. Hudson Canyon is a pathway from land to sea, extending over 400 nautical miles seaward from the New York, New Jersey harbor, across the continental margin, and out to the deep ocean basin extending 300 miles beneath the sea. The canyon was formed during the last ice age, over 10,000 years ago, when the sea level was about 121.9 meters lower and the mouth of the Hudson River was near the edge of the continental shelf, about 160.9 kilometers east of its present site. The river discharged sediment that helped carve the canyon, aided by underwater avalanches of mud and sand. The Veracruz Canyon. The Veracruz Canyon is an underwater canyon located off the eastern coast of Mexico in the Gulf of Mexico, not far from the port city of Veracruz. It is considered for drilling to obtain oil in and around Veracruz Canyon. Congo Canyon. Congo Canyon, a large submarine canyon incised into the South Atlantic continental shelf and slope of equatorial Africa. The head of the canyon lies 28 kilometers inland up to the Congo estuary. It has a depth of 21 meters. The canyon crosses the entire shelf for 85 kilometers offshore. It cuts across the continental slope and goes up to a depth of 2,650 meters. Great Bahama Canyon Great Bahama Canyon is located off the Bahamas in the Atlantic Ocean. It lies northeast of the Great Bahama between Great Abaco and Eleuthera Islands. Two main branches merge to form the submarine canyon. The vertical wall of the canyon goes up to 4,285 meters from the canyon bed to the surrounding seabed. It is 225 kilometers in length. Submarine canyons resemble river canyons on land, usually having steep, rocky walls. They are found along most continental slopes. Those of the Grand Bahama Canyon, which are thought to be the deepest, cut nearly 5 kilometers deep into the continental slope. Most submarine canyons extend only about 50 kilometers or less, but a few are more than 300 kilometers long. Canyons of the Indian Ocean 
Indian Ocean has a few notable submarine canyons. They include the Perth Canyon and Swatch of No Ground, Song. The Perth Canyon. The Perth Canyon is a submarine canyon located on the edge of the continental shelf off the coast of Fremantle, Western Australia. It is located at approximately 22 kilometers west of Rottnest Island. It was carved by the Swan River probably before the tertiary when this part of the continental shelf was above sea level. It is an average of 1.5 kilometers deep and 15 kilometers across, making it similar in dimension to the Grand Canyon. The Perth Canyon occupies an area of 2,900 square kilometers and ranges in depth from 700 to 4,000 meters. Within a few kilometers, its depth drops from 200 meters down to 1,000 meters, and then it continues as a deep gully all the way out to the 4,000 meter depth. It contains the world's largest plunge pool, a depression in the canyon which is 2 kilometers long, 6 kilometers across, and 300 meters deep. The Swatch of No Ground Song The Swatch of No Ground Song, S-O-N-G, is a submarine canyon in the northern Indian Ocean. It supports a fairly well-described group of fauna that includes one of the world's largest known populations of Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins, a possibly resident population of Bright's whales, and large groups of spinner and pantropical spotted dolphins. The distribution of these species is stratified according to environmental characteristics, with Bright's whales and bottlenose dolphins concentrated in relatively shallow waters close to the canyon head where upwelling is maximized. The methane gas. Submarine canyons are believed to contain vast reserves of methane hydrates, a promising clean burning natural energy source believed to reside in near freezing temperatures under high pressures within seafloor sediments, although no technology yet exists to extract the methane. These methane deposits are dispersed under the ocean floor over millions of square miles in this and other areas of the world. Some scientists speculate that the methane gas pockets in the underwater shelves could cause undersea landslides that might produce tsunamis. Marine life in canyons. The interplay of physical and biological processes is common in submarine canyons. The very dominant ones are mass wasting, turbidity currents, bottom currents, and bioerosion. Submarine canyons support a fairly well described group of fauna that includes one of the world's largest known populations. The distribution of these species is stratified according to environmental characteristics. Submarine canyons are geologically significant, oceanographically important underwater features. Coastal hazards. Continental margin is facing increasing threats from human activities such as bottom fishing, oil and gas extraction, and sewage dumping. Many of them are anthropogenic influences penetrating into the deep sea. They are also major sources of pollution. Marine pollution occurs when harmful or potentially harmful effects result from the entry into the ocean in the form of chemicals, particles, industrial effluents, agricultural chemicals, and residential wastes, or the spread of invasive organisms. Conclusion Submarine canyons are dramatic and widespread topographic features crossing continental and island margins in all oceans. Submarine canyons have long been a subject of great interest to marine geologists and oceanographers. Seafloor terrain and substrate heterogeneity altogether account for the second most important driver of benthic diversity in submarine canyons. The physical canyon structure, such as bottom types and sedimentary structure, presence of hard substrates, grain size distributions, shape and relief of the canyon has a great influence on marine life. Despite their unusual ecological characteristics and global distribution along oceanic continental margins, only scattered information is available about the influence of submarine canyons on deep sea ecosystem, its structure, and productivity. Submarine canyons are very typical features in the ocean floors.